I'm Rob. And I'm Nate. And welcome back to Rob and Nate Record a Podcast. Homework! This is a new segment for us. This is uh, something we had thought about for, for some time, which was the idea of doing probably shorter episodes in the form of homework. We give each other a film uh, that we've seen, we said you should see this film, watch it separately, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it. We've kind of done this before where we've watched movies separately and then Once or them. twice, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But what we did for this uh, episode is I had recently borrowed Rob's copy of one of his favorite films, which Butch Cash the Sundance Kid, to watch for only the second time for me. And uh, over the course of conversations, I realized or was reminded that Rob had never seen the follow-up film of sorts, which is The Sting, uh, Oscar winner for 1973. Same director, uh, George Roy Hill, as uh, Butch Cash the Sundance Kid, and same two principal leads, Robert Redford and Paul Newman. This is a film that I hadn't really seen until sometime within the last decade or so, but I have a very early memory related to it, which is this would have been sometime in the mid-'80s, probably 85, 86. It was going to be shown as, I think, the movie of the week on one of the networks. And I remember we had to get something done early so that my dad could watch it because he really wanted to see it because he hadn't seen it since... You'd seen it theatrically in 1973. Oh, really? Because yeah. this was the mid-'80s, and you just didn't get a chance to rewatch films. And so he had fond memories of it. It's like, well, we're going to do this now so I can watch The Sting. Yeah. And so that just kind of implanted in my brain. Yeah. But anyway, what are your thoughts on The Sting? You know, I enjoyed the film ultimately, and I respect its performance. As I texted you after I watched it, I, I suppose this would probably would have been more effective in 1973 than it is today. It feels Why like, would you say that? Well, it feels like we've seen similar films okay. s- or similar performances since then, similar storylines. But I, sus- I s- suspect that this was more, more novel. innovative and novel mm-hmm. in 1973. However, that being said, like once you get into the heart of this story and get into the setup for the plot, which I guess we should give a quick plot overview... Two grifters are teaming up to pull up an ultim- off an ultimate con. And um, this is in 1930s Chicago. Yeah. And so you have Robert Redford plays Johnny Hooker and Paul Newman plays Henry Gondorf. Early in the movie, Robert Redford is partnered with... Robert Earl Jones. Who is Luther Coleman. And they pull off a heist and inadvertently rob a big, you know, like gangster, a big wig. And before they can realize what's happened and take off with their monies, yeah, Mr. Jones is, his character is killed off. And Robert Redford's character goes on the run. He's able to avoid everything, but then, you know, he partners up with Paul Newman. And And Paul Newman had been, uh, Robert Earl Jones had said, you need to seek out my friend so-and-so. He's the best. Because Robert Earl Jones was ready to retire basically at this point and wanted to make sure his his buddy had somebody to to hook up with scheme wise yeah and so they partner up and they decide they're going to pull off you know this really big con with a lot of moving parts a lot of people a lot of time a lot of money yeah and a lot of investment into it and they lure in robert shaw which i realized i don't know how many other movies besides jaw i've seen robert shaw in and so this was kind of unique in that regard Hmm. And he plays Lonigan, who is a big-time mobster, I believe from New York, and he relocates to Chicago to deal with the aftermath of the Robert Earl Jones, uh, Robert Redford accidental heist Yeah, to kind of clean house in his operations in Chicago. And they con him. It's a long con, it's too. It's a really long con. It's yeah. an elaborate long con. I had described this film earlier as like it's two hours of setup for a five-minute payoff. And it's worth it. Yeah. Well, and you have an underlying secondary story that involves Lieutenant Snyder, played by Charles During, who is trying to track down Johnny Hooker, played by Robert Redford, throughout the movie. And he has to stay on the move and and avoid not just that, but also other attempts on his life. And is able to do so in part through... I mean, there's also multiple layers to the con. You have Dana Elker plays FBI agent Polk who is part of the con, though it's not... Like, I saw that twist coming, but it's not immediately made clear that he's part of the con. It's not fully revealed till towards the end. 
But yeah. So what? So explain the con. What in what in essence was the con? So they basically set up a fake casino, like horse racing type Betting establishment. Gambling, yeah. And and have to lure Robert Shaw Robert Shaw's character Doyle Lonigan in, and convince him that they have. Like Robert Redford's trying to convince him. Well, Paul Newman has beat him at cards on the train through cheating. Hmm. And so he's trying to find a way to get back at Paul Newman's character. Robert Shaw. Ro- Robert Shaw is. And so they have to lure him in and convince him that they have a foolproof scheme to yeah. win at the betting so that he can clean out Paul Newman's character, who is the proprietor of yeah. this gambling establishment. So Robert Redford presents himself as Paul Newman's assistant who's kind of dissatisfied and wouldn't mind screwing over Because his he's boss. treated like crap. Yeah. Him. Yeah. And... They they reveal to Robert Shaw that there is a delay between the races and when the race information gets to the announcer to, to read. Versus the telegram. Yeah, versus the telegram, which is, you know, like a three-minute delay or something like that. Not a lot of time, but enough time to place a last-minute bet. And they do a trial run that proves that they knew the result ahead of time, but... He didn't have enough time to place the bet. Well, there's multiple trial runs. There's the first trial run where they bet like 20000 mm. and win. And so they give Robert, Robert Shaw's character, D- Doyle Lonigan a whole bunch of cash, which he's supposed to give Robert Redford a big cut of. Uh. Or I think he bets 5000 to win twenty. I yeah. think that was the deal. And, you know, Robert Redford's supposed to get a certain cut, but because he's lost money to Paul Newman's character, Henry Gondorf, on the train... He takes his full cut of what he's owed from Paul Newman's character off the top and only gives Robert Redford like a thousand, you yeah. know. And they do a second trial run, and that's the one where he gets to the window and the betting's closed before he can place, yeah, yeah. you know, the race starts before he can place his bet. Like the timing is just barely off. So then they come up with this plan to make, you know, a grand wager. It's, I think, $200,000, if yeah. I remember correctly, is the wager. Mm. And, uh, of course, it, it you know it's a scheme. They they rip him off and yeah. And it's brutal. I mean, I, I, we won't talk about it too much because well, then the FBI comes in and raids it. Yeah, and, but I mean, it's just it's a joy to watch. Yeah, the 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 build up to that is just in lesser hands would not work at all because that and and the build up's good too. There's interesting stuff that happens in the build up. There's side stories like the lady in the diner and that whole thing. You're not even getting to my favorite moment of it. Oh, okay, what is your favorite moment? So Robert Redford's character, this is really about revenge for the death of his friend in this. Yeah, yeah. And so they pull off the con, and Paul Newman gets his portion of the cash, and everyone else is supposed to hang around to get have the cash divvied up and get their portion of the money. And Robert Redford walks out without his money and leaves with Paul Newman. And that was my favorite moment. Yeah. Because it just shows, like, this was this was about the revenge for him. He wanted to pull off the thing. The other thing this was about on larger zeitgeist pop culture level, level and did, did you watch the trailer? No. Before, uh, I told you to watch the trailer because the tagline at the end of the trailer, because they're, they're it's like, oh, it's, they're back together again for Butch Cassidy and Sunday. It says, and this time, they just might win. Oh. And it's like the Rocky two. Yeah. It's like, like the other first one was super satisfying, but he didn't win. And this is that payoff that you've been waiting for four, four years to get. Yeah. And as companion pieces, I think that's just kind of wonderful. Yeah. Another interesting distinction about this film is it is the movie to win the Oscar between the two Godfather movies. Oh, really? Nice. I think I have heard that before, but yeah, that is interesting. So ultimately for me, the ending of this, like, so the the beginning of this was a little slow. Like, Mm -hmm. as good as the setup is with Robert Earl Jones... I felt it was too slow, and I didn't really love the beginning, and I it wasn't until about halfway into the movie that it really hooked me. It's very much a pacing that you, you wouldn't do today. Yeah. And it's a, a, pace, a pacing that I kind of prefer. To if, some extent. If, if it's done with only if talent. The, only if the payoff is worth it. Yeah. And, and, you know, and somebody could make a boring, slow version of this, but George Roy Hill at the director's chair, and then, to, you know, they have... The, the return of those two leads. And, and the supporting cast is great. Charles Durning is great. Robert Shaw is great. Uh, Ray Walston has a, has a small role. Uh, Charles Decap. It's just a fun film. 
So ultimately, I had rated this the same as I rate Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Mm-hmm. Eight, eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Yeah. Even though Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid is a favorite of mine, it only gets eight out of ten. What stars. would you give it on the four star scale? Oh, it's a solid three star film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I would. If I was, I might bump it to a three and a half. But and it's, I would three and a half this thing, and I would uh, probably eat it. Yeah. yeah. It's a good film. So I enjoyed it. I'm glad that you brought it to my attention and brought it to me and assigned it to me. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah. which means... It is in turn. So part of what we'll do in these recordings, we're going to make this a regular bonus content thing. Whoever has just finished their homework assignment will in turn give the other person an, a homework assignment. Uh-huh. We've had elements of criteria to this. Or we've outlined some criteria. We're going to do this a little differently than what the intention is because Rob didn't know that I planned to do this at the end of this episode. Until to today. So, so he didn't get to parse out in his mind uh, really what he wanted to assign me. Well, I, I had... So coming into today, I was debating multiple different assignments or different ideas for the assignment. And then we decided this morning that it would be assigned today. And so I am going to make this actually a little bit, I guess you could call it a little bit of a cop-out, which I do sometimes do on the podcast. Mm. I'm going to let Nate pick his, for lack of better terms, pick his poison. So I'm going to give Nate three options for his homework assignment. Okay. What do we got? First option, an Adam Sandler movie, Big Daddy. Big Daddy. Okay. Option two, it's not on your blog, so I know you haven't seen it since bef- since 2005. Tommy Boy. Okay, Tommy Boy. Okay, okay. Option three. You get to pick the movie. However, you must complete the five-day challenge. Oh. Which is, watch the same movie five days in a row. I, which is a challenge Nate has been talking about doing for, for about two years. Yeah. I'm going to do something similar to what you just did, which is the five-day challenge is intriguing, but because I'm doing this on the fly, I'm not going to do the five-day challenge. I have seen Tommy Boy. It's a classic. I have not seen Big Daddy, so we will do Big Daddy for my own work. Now, the reason I picked Big Daddy for you, the reason Big Daddy and Tommy Boy were in it, one of the areas of Nate's film repertoire that is lacking is 90s comedies. And specifically 1990s Adam Sandler comedies. I have not seen Happy Gilmore. Or Billy Madison. I have Madison. seen Billy Madison. And I thought about assigning you one of those two. Mm-hmm. However, I know one of the things you dislike the most about Adam Sandler is when he does that voice. Yeah, I am Shane. Or which he does in both of those movies quite a bit. Mm-hmm. And Big Daddy, he does it less and does it a little bit straighter. So I decided to torture you the least with, oh, with okay. Big Daddy, though I don't. I, I'm really torn. I don't know which one of the three you would have preferred, mm-hmm. but I was really torn. I mean, if it, when it came to Adam Sandler movies, it was either Happy Gilmore or Big Daddy. All right. All right. I will return and report. Okay. And you won't see these. You will not see any more homework episodes. You will not see a homework episode any more frequently than twice per month. So it will likely be a little while before you see the the return and report of the other movie so i'm rob i'm nate and this is rob and nate record podcast the bonus content is coming up it's bonus content so what do you really think of my options for you i'm a little surprised sometimes with what you come up with because because i'm generally thinking on a very high level of cinema literacy is like I really had not seen these Adam Sandler. What movies. cinema cinema literacy <laughs> film can I assign That's to true. you that you haven't already seen? That's true. A big portion of you know when I'm looking at what to assign you, it's what hasn't Nate seen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can make you watch a movie I know you already like again, mm. but where's the fun in that? That's true.